Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. My next guest is an international speaker, a coach, and a shamanic priestess who is really passionate about helping women, men, and young teens to reclaim their power as spiritual and sexual beings. She is the author of The Four Spiritual Laws of Sexual and Spiritual Enlightenment. Please welcome to the show, Taylor Ashley. Thank you, Regina. Hello and welcome. It's so beautiful to see you again. It is absolutely such a joy to have you and and to share your light truly with, with you. so many people out there who have gone through quite a bit of your own story mm -hmm. and, and have walked a bit in your shoes. So, but you're really coming to this incredible work as a result of your journey. Can you tell us a little bit about how you've come to to sure. doing this work? Um, yeah, to, to tell you how I arrived here, I have to go back in time just a little bit. I'm not going to go all the way back to sure. adolescence, which is really where it started. Okay. But the turning point for me was in 1999, I was living in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And I was standing on a subway platform and talk about a sign from the universe. I mean, it was literally a billboard. It was a big sign. Mm. And the sign said, teenage prostitution is child abuse. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I froze. My breath stopped. Mm -hmm. And I was in shock because that teenage prostitute was me. Mm -hmm. And until that moment, I just thought I'd been a bad girl. It hadn't even occurred to me that I had been a victim. So I carried that secret all those years and that self-judgment and the shame. And anyone who's been through any kind of abuse experience, the, the biggest burden is the shame and the guilt yes. and the self-blame, especially what happens with sexual abuse because the nerve endings of pleasure are still there. Mm. So even though you're having an abusive experience, the, the physical pleasure still exists. It becomes very confusing. Sure. So anyway, I made my way home. and. 27 years of suppressed emotions just erupted out of me all at once. It was rage and anger and grief, and it just, it was so intense and powerful that I didn't think I was physically going to be able to, I felt like I was physically going to explode, and I cried out, oh God, please help me. Yes. The second, I mean, literally, the moment I spoke those words, mm. there was a bird that landed on my back patio railing. I was looking out my bathroom window, mm. and it was like mm -hmm. someone flipped a switch. I instantly became peaceful. And I was more aware of a non-physical divine presence watching over me in that moment like never before. Mm. And the bird was just there long enough to get a good look and it flew away. Because spirit speaks to me through animals because they know I'm going to go look it up. Yes. So I ran to get my animal speak book yes. by Ted Andrews and I went through and I read all the descriptions and the bird was a grapple. The teaching of a grapple is to release emotional congestion from the past before it manifests in the physical illness you can move forward into the future. Wow. So wow. I thought, that's it. I'm just going to give my permission to purge. So for yeah. two days, I stayed home, and that's all I did. Yeah. I yelled, I screamed, I cried, I collapsed, I slept, I woke up, and I did it again. But I was so aware that I was being held and watched over. Mm -hmm. And at the end of those two days, it was like a veil lifted. Mm -hmm. I started to feel self-love again. And I literally got on the phone and started calling my friends. Guess what happened to me as a teenager? It was no longer this fear like, oh my god, if they know I'm a whore, they won't be you that was the inner language, and sure. I was very good at covering it up because mm -hmm. I had that elegance about mm -hmm. me, the confidence. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was the breakdown that very quickly turned into a breakthrough. Yes. So yes. But after those two days, I started to love myself, and now I could see women that I thought were very confident. I could feel a layer of unworthiness being mm -hmm. the service, and yes. energetically, I could sense that it was connected to the sexual energy. Mm -hmm. So that planted the first seed in me wanting to do this work. And you know, when you think about it, our sexual energy, before we come into these physical bodies, mm -hmm. we're a non-physical spiritual being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
It is someone has an orgasm, it's a sexual energy that makes it possible to be a spiritual being inside this physical body having a physical experience. Sexual energy is literally the power core that connects the spiritual and the physical realm. Mm -hmm. Now that, I know for a number of folks, that might be one of those, say that again, <laughs> say that again. Without sexual energy, we cannot be having this physical experience. Mm -hmm. It is what creates us. So you see and understand sexual energy as creative energy. Yes. And it, anyone who's studied the chakras, the second chakra, which is the energy activation point for sexual energy, is the exact same energy active life, activation point for creative energy. It's where life begins. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is this beautiful cool, right? gift right. from God's source, whatever that means for you. And it was created pleasurable mm -hmm. as a gift. And um, yeah, it's in, if you think of our sexual energy, because right next to the second chakra is the root chakra, and it's called the root for a reason, because it's what roots us into the earth. Yes. And if you think about it, the, um, and the root chakra is actually very connected to money, because it's the, the mm -hmm. energy activation point for survival, security, safety, mm -hmm. you know, root into the earth. And you, you intertwine those, you really yes. touch on that in your book, which we'll get into in a little bit. but. Yeah. But for this moment, so yes. for those, you know, again, who may even, this is really, I mean, we just went, I think, in 30 <laughs> seconds, right, from some of the most devastating things to hear of, that a human being could go through and be experiencing to, you know, sexual energy is creative energy and this is our spiritual experience. So, so let's unpack that for some folks right. for a little bit sure. and just help in the digestion. So. From that teenage experience, yes. was it just woof after those two days of, of that transformation and then boom, life was beautiful? No, there was still some healing journey to right. do. Yeah, definitely right. had some more layers to clear. Sure. But that really opened it up and opened up a huge new awareness for me. That mm -hmm. is what set me on my spiritual quest because I thought, I know this energy feels beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I really want to understand it because I could, not only in myself, but I witnessed in others the guilt and shame well, sure. that's connected to it. And often the guilt and shame was the separation of God's source, whatever that means to you, from the sexual. So I made it my yes. mission to explore the connection of what God means to me mm -hmm. and my own sexual energy. And then a few years later, I discovered holistic rebirthing, a form of breath work. Mm -hmm. And that is what really cleared the final layers, because there were some, still some big layers that sure. had to come up. Sure, I mean, that kind of trauma doesn't just disappear. Yeah, and one of the, the biggest rage that I had toward was my junior high school principal, because he mm -hmm. found me sitting on a bar stool at age 16. That was back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. It was easy to get into the bar as a teenager. And, um, you know, there's a man, junior high school principal, who has the opportunity to be a father role model and reach right, out and protect. And Instead, he reached in his wallet and said, oh, I always thought you were sexy. And he took me to a hotel where he went by the aisle and said, oh, we'll be good at this. This is wow. a good profession for you. Wow. And I didn't even realize what he had done until that day that I had the breakdown because mm -hmm. now I was old enough to have a 16-year-old daughter. Mm. So the actual, the biggest rage is toward him, not the man that, that got actually me. Actually did. That, that yeah. manipulated me. Yes. So, so for you, so I'm hearing now some, some time. Uh, so in, say, the next 10 to 15 years of your life, you were really trying to unpack that experience mm -hmm. and find meaning in it and, and understanding on a higher level. Mm -hmm. What was the point of all of that? And how can you, you know, for lack of a better kind of term, take the lemons and make lemonade, right, so to mm -hmm. speak. How can you find what is the message, the highest message from this experience? So you had, you know, continued with relationships, did that show up for you in, in continued relationships after that point? Yeah, because what had happened before that moment, I was choosing relationships that were not healthy. You know, I'm not a drinker, but I was choosing alcoholic, verbally abusive boyfriends mm. because I thought I needed someone with baggage if, there did, if the secret did come up so they could accept that. So when that happened, I actually started attracting a very different type of person into my life. Okay. And I had a very dear friend that um, um, we weren't in a living relationship, but we saw one another consistently mm. off and on over the years. And he was very, just, it was, a beautiful new energy I attracted and he saw the highest vibration of me. Mm -hmm. So I love the reflection of myself that yes, I saw yeah. through him. Yes. And as I shared with him my story, that made me even more 
beautiful and, and amazing in his eyes mm. that I'd gone through that and come to where I was. Yes. So, so that really helped. So I started to witness a shift as I stepped into that. Yeah. And, mm. and the more I healed and the more I brought my sexual energy in alignment with who I am spiritually, mm -hmm. the more I love myself. Yeah, the yeah. more tangible my connection to God's source felt, yes. the more powerful I stood in my own energy and my own voice. Mm -hmm. so there's a direct connection mm -hmm. there. And I want to definitely get into that a little bit more in a moment, especially your own spiritual journey, because mm -hmm. you know, so you've had this now sexual journey, but you, you keep speaking about that spiritual journey. So I want to go into that a little bit more sure. in just a moment. Uh, so we can kind of unpack that so, and then really get into how did you bring those two worlds together because for so many people those are two opposite things that don't go together and for many still quite a bit of struggle of how to integrate who they are as a sexual being and who they are as a sacred being. So we'll get into that when we come right back. So come right back with Taylor Ashley. Don't miss Vanessa Shaw's The Big Bold Event. January 23rd through 25th in Phoenix, Arizona. Vanessa Shaw, be bold, play bigger. And we are back with Taylor Ashley, who is sharing from her really amazing journey. Uh, Taylor, I mean, what you endured as a teenager, uh, and now how you are transforming and actually transmuting that experience into something incredibly powerful. Uh, we were touching in on that, you know, the sexual experience, the sexual side of your experience, but you spoke and are speaking so much about your sacred and the spiritual yes. side of your journey. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, for me, the two weave together. Of course. And, um, and so as I went on my own healing path, you know, I observed that the reason so many people struggle, because it's you know, any kind of a, abuse or anything that happens like that, it is the shame and the guilt and the self-judgment you carry for years after. Mm -hmm. That's a debilitating part. And around sexual energy, there's just such, there's been such a separation from who we are spiritually. Absolutely. And it started a couple Absolutely. thousand years ago <laughs> yes. as a method of controlling. And how better to control a society than to inflict guilt and shame on the very energy that creates us. Mm -hmm. You know, and whatever God's source means, for you, you know, I'm, I'm sure you believe that everything in creation mm -hmm. was done with a pure intention. Absolutely. There are no mistakes. Mm -hmm. I don't believe God makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. I believe that everything about us was created perfectly and divinely with pure intention. Yes. It's not like, oh, I'll leave the sexual energy for the devil to do its work on, and, mm -hmm. and then let the devil create that. No. Right. We, every part of us is a pure creation. Absolutely. So Taylor, what I want to do is is go a little bit even before you know this understanding of God and Source. You know these wonderful words that you have now. Yes. Going even before that, where did that come from? Were you spiritual as a child? Did you understand a connection to something bigger than yourself as a child, even through that experience, or was it after? No, there was there was always a connection that I had there. Mm -hmm. Not obviously not to the degree that I evolved, evolved into. Mm -hmm. um, but even just before that big breakdown moment had happened, um, I had, had various experiences, past life experiences mm -hmm. that were guided through someone who specialized in that. And my mother too was very spiritually orientated versus religious and we've always been very close. Okay. Um, the reason that I was so vulnerable to what happened is my father, he wasn't a bad person, but he had no idea how to show up as a father, he didn't know how to say I love you, he didn't know how to tell me what to do. So I was very naive and needy and wanted a man to tell me he loved me to tell me what to do. Sure. That's what happened, only it was, that's the man who ended up becoming my parent once he knew that he had my heart. He controlled me out of love. And I don't remember how his version thereof. His version, mm -hmm. huh? Yes. And I don't remember how I got away from him, but then a woman got controlled me out of fear. She couldn't mm -hmm. beat me up if I didn't do what she said. So mm -hmm. I experienced a distorted masculine, distorted feminine. But yes, there was always that element of a spiritual seeking. Okay. And for anyone who knows anything about numerology, my birth path is actually a seven. We are the seekers. <laughs> I'm very familiar with that. That happens to be one of my well, there you go. So. Yes. Okay. And and I, I really wanted to speak to that because I know there are so many people who are still in situations yes. 
and they may feel very disconnected from some sort of, you know, energy or bigger than themselves. God, they may think they're being punished. They may think God has forgotten them. God has forsaken them. They may have been brought up in other spiritual traditions or religious traditions mm -hmm. uh, that teach yes. that and really compound the shame, yeah. compound the feeling of low worth and not good and all of that. So I was really wanting to find out your path and how, even in the midst of what you were experiencing, were you able to still be able to feel a connection and carry on so that when you had this big awakening, mm -hmm. that actually could carry you even further? Yes, yeah, so, deep so. down I always knew, because you know, I, uh, when, I, when I was with a partner, I mean, I was, I was married, I very much loved my husband, we mm -hmm. were married for a very short time, mm -hmm. and he's a good man, we just weren't meant to share a life together, but it ended mm -hmm. friendly. Um, you know, so I still had love relationships, and the sexual experience was very beautiful. So it just didn't make sense to me that the very energy that creates us mm -hmm. is something separate mm -hmm. from God's source. Yes. It, it just, it just deep down, I, mm -hmm. I knew that there was something out of perspective, Excellent. which really brings us to the first spiritual law of sexual enlightenment, Excellent. which is yes. the gift. Oh, I love this. And you know, imagine that you're making this beautiful gift for someone that you love. Imagine that it's an instrument of you can't imagine that. Imagine you hire a craftsman. Mm -hmm. And you craft it in every perfect detail for this person you love who happens to be a musician. And you give them this beautiful, perfect gift. Mm -hmm. And they just play one string. Mm -hmm. You know, they may appreciate it, but they don't honor the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they judge it in some way. You know, mm -hmm. how would that make you feel? Yes. And I don't think God's source feels bad in any way, but I think God's source being very patient waiting for us to catch up with the true intention meant behind this gift. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, and understanding from my perspective, that everything in creation is created perfectly mm -hmm. as a gift to us. I don't think it's a coincidence that the orchid flower mm -hmm. is designed to resemble the sex of a woman. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, it comes in a variety of colors, mm -hmm. sizes, mm -hmm. It's perfect in every detail. It must tr be treated with very much respect mm -hmm. in order for it to blossom. It's very delicate, but it's very durable at the same time. And it's treated as this very precious, sacred flower. So you see the gift as our sexual energy. Sexual energy. Yeah. And I believe that when the orchid was created, it was there, look, see, <laughs> women, this, <laughs> is, this is who you are. Mm -hmm. this, this is how you're meant to see yourself. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe it was an accident that that, that flower resembles our yes. flower. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautifully stated. And so we have the first law. Spiritual law is the gift. Just mm -hmm. acknowledging that it is a gift from God. Excellent. Just acknowledging. Just acknowledging that mm -hmm. this is a gift and, and treat it as you would a precious gift. Mm -hmm. that was, I mean, when you think about it, mm -hmm. and I hope this isn't getting into too much detail, for, but the, <laughs> the clitoris mm -hmm. has 8,000 nerve endings. It's for pleasure, and it's the only human body part created for the sole purpose, purpose of, of pleasure. pleasure. It serves no other purpose. Mm. To me, that's an incredible that's gift. Yeah. That is a huge gift. That is a really something to think about. Yes. I think that's yes, and when I was thinking of the gift, I thought, well, the women have the, the porous, so what do the men have as their gift? Because their, their body part is actually has multiple purpose, and I realized because the feminine, because um, you know, our bodies are much more complicated mm -hmm. to figure out. So the gift I saw in the men is the artistry that it takes for them to have the feminine open up mm -hmm. to be able to receive love because mm -hmm. we must feel very safe at the core. Mm -hmm. We want to know that we're beautiful in the eyes of the one we were with. We really don't care about anyone else. It's nice to be seen as beautiful, but it's the one that we're with. That's mm -hmm. who we want to be seen as beautiful as, mm -hmm. and we want to feel safe with them and cherished by them. Mm -hmm. So a man's ability to acknowledge us mm -hmm. and our gift and have us surrender to the love, that to me is the gift for him because that aligns him now with the feminine that is within him, which is the energy of love, mm -hmm. compassion, nurturing. Mm -hmm. So it's a weaving with men and women, this, this gift. So, but for the gift, for yes. this first step, for this first law, yes. it's, it's not required necessarily for anyone else outside of oneself mm -hmm. to simply acknowledge the gift that's within. Yes. 
right? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Because obviously, you know, we know many different people are on different paths. Yes. And, and so that scenario exactly. may not be fitting for them. But, yes. but it's certainly simply to first acknowledge that yes. there is a gift yes. and to honor that within oneself. So I know, I know a lot of your work is with teens, well, and um, so this message. Yeah, that's actually the big why behind where I do. I'm mm -hmm. um, opening up to be offering that work soon. Yes. And, and this one I get really passionate about, mm -hmm. and that actually comes into third spiritual law, which is responsibility. Mm -hmm. We have a huge responsibility to the information that's being passed on to the teens, because it's actually gotten worse. Mm -hmm. Everyone awesome. I know when we were a teen, we got a biology lesson and a word of caution, and that's pretty much it. That's and I've talked to it. mothers who have very open communication with their daughters, but there's only so much they want to hear from mom, and then it just gets weird. Yeah. So what we've got is schools giving a biology lesson, now with the internet, porn is easy access. So boys, are, the poor boys are living up to the Smith that they instinctively know what to do. Mm. So they're training, and they think they should know what to do, but, but we don't, don't come with a manual. Right. So what's happening is the boys are turning to porn as a source of education. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm not putting down all porn, because I do know some people that are doing an educational mm -hmm. version of it, mm -hmm. but the large majority isn't. And I'm actually going to be working with an ex-porn star who's now speaking out against porn. Mm -hmm. And he was in the business, and he said 80% of the business treats the women very badly. And that so, is really the, you know, that's the, a whole the other topic on its own. It is, right. We but, could totally go into that. Yeah. But that is the main part. But that's what's happening. The boys are turning to porn as a source of education. They think that's what women want. So the girls are leaving the home, turning to the boys to understand their own body. Mm -hmm. When they realize the boys don't know what they're doing, mm -hmm. what I'm meeting, because I have a lot of friends in their 20s now and mm -hmm. younger, and I'm hearing it consistently, where the girls are staying silent because they don't want to hurt his feelings. Right. Right. So they don't speak up because no one's taught them how to communicate. Mm -hmm. Well, and many of them haven't even felt comfortable to explore their own bodies, to know what their exactly. own bodies are, are, are doing. So what I'm passionate about doing mm -hmm. is creating a resource okay. where girls are given permission mm -hmm. to figure out their own bodies. I mean, this whole old mindset of, you know, don't touch yourself, that, well, that's crazy. What you mean then? That means that someone that you don't even know yet has a more of a right to touch your own body than you do? Mm -hmm. No, we need to understand our own body and be given permission to explore and to also understand the sacredness of the energy. I think that's the big key, really, that's yes. been missing, yes? And also to understand the power of it mm -hmm. and take responsibility for that power of it and to really honor that in themselves mm -hmm. and one another. And girls also need a resource so when they are ready to be with a boy or the next one, mm -hmm. they know how to be a guide for him from a very loving and compassionate place. Mm -hmm. Beautifully stated. And that's that falls under the third law, you said, which is responsibility. responsibility. So what's the second one? The second one is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness of everything it keeps coming from up. the past. Yeah, mm -hmm. forgiveness of your abusers if you've had them, mm -hmm. forgiveness of past relationships, forgiveness of religion, forgiveness of parents for not knowing how to pass on the information. Forgiveness of yourself is yes, really the biggest I one. I think the yes. <laughs> we must come to full peace with the past in order to fully live in the present. And mm. that was my journey. The breath work did that for me. Because mm. what the breath does, it brings up whatever the body and soul is ready to release in that moment and it clears it on a cellular level. Mm. That's why I became a facilitator of this breath. Because it works so powerfully for me. I had a lot to forget. <laughs> I had a lot of gook inside of me. Yeah, yeah. And what happens when you clear that, because everywhere I go now, I hear people saying, oh, you've got such a calm energy, you've got so much light. Well, that's because I've cleared all the residue. Yeah. So yeah. now when I do the breath, it's either because something just happened in this moment that mm -hmm. just sort of aggravated me so I can get it out right away, yes. or it's a past life that actually comes up that needs to be cleared. And now what I would love to do is, is to go a little bit more into that breath work, yeah. right? And talk about how that's showing up for you in some of the workshops you're doing. Yeah. And you have your, you know, your an additional book that's also now tying this whole, you know, journey into business somehow, right? So we're yes. going to get to explore yes. how that shows up. Yes. So you have, you're really taking this journey and understanding the sacred sexual energy mm -hmm. and seeing how that shows up in all the parts of who we are because we're yes. not this, you know, compartmentalized. No. We're all one, right? Yeah. So we're going to get into that when we come right back. So come right back with Taylor Ashley. You'll learn the fourth spiritual law right after this. Don't miss Vanessa Shaw's The Big Bold Event, January 23rd through 25th in Phoenix, Arizona. Vanessa Shaw, be bold, play bigger. 
And we are back with Taylor Ashley, and we will be now jumping into a little bit of this breath work that she spoke about, as well as finding out the fourth spiritual and sacred sexual law. So, Taylor, you've been speaking about how powerful the breath has been for you in yes. your own healing. Is there something you can share with all of us? Well, the particular breath that I do for emotional clearing, it's, it's, it's not exactly a relaxing breath. When I hold session, I do it one-on-one, -on -one and um, as I assisted my mentor through the process as I was becoming, I helped her take two to 400 people at a time, so I do groups as well. Beautiful. And you pay really loud tribal drumming, and it takes you so deep that there's actually an hour to prepare you for it. Because wow. there's so many things that can happen, so many places you can go, and it can be really scary if you're not prepared properly. So. Okay. I can't go into that one right now okay. because it is mm -hmm. so intense. But just touching on the breath itself, mm -hmm. when you think about it, if you've ever been with someone who's passed on, mm -hmm. you hear them go, and you can feel the spirits left the body in that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, the heart's still beating, the body's still shining down, but when the breath leaves the body, the spirit goes with it. Mm -hmm. So the breath is literally the vehicle that holds the spirit within the physical form. Mm -hmm. So with that understanding, we can use the breath by increasing the breath. Every morning when I start my day, even if it's for just five minutes, I take the time to close my eyes and I start taking deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, and the mind is still going da, da, da. So I keep breathing until all I hear is the sound of my breath. And once I get that, even just, you know, oh, there's a few seconds, that's all I heard is my breath. Then I invite spirit in. Because it is a universe of free will, so we really need to consciously ask for what I want. So I invite spirit to come in and fill my body with all the source energy I can handle in that day. And I just tune into nothing but the sound of my breath, traffic, and bring my attention to the sounds and just breathing and being very conscious that spirit is being expanded inside my physical body. And if you just take five minutes to do that each day. It starts the day with, from this beautiful, peaceful space and then complete it with whatever you're grateful for. I am so grateful for the sun on my face. I'm so grateful for the breeze on my skin. I'm so grateful for the birds. I'm so grateful for this person, for this person. Just go for your gratitude. Yes. Yes. Start the day like this, five minutes. That's all you need. Difference. That's all you need. Yeah. And use the breath to yes. take you there. Okay, excellent. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful uh, gift that you've just given for so many to just begin, just even begin. Now, again, you share this breath work and other healing modalities that yes. you do uh, in workshops yes. and, and things like that. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I have a women's retreat coming up in the fall, mm -hmm. and it's called the Sexual Enlightenment Experience. Mm -hmm. And it's C. a four, right. C, S E E. It's a four-day journey, and we will be doing the breath on the second day. We dive deep in what happens when you're doing the group experience because it takes you so deep. Mm -hmm. um, we pair up in partners. We actually do two rounds, so everyone has a chance. I guide you how to be there as a coach for one another. Nice to so it's seat. just as powerful, I've seen, to be able to witness someone else's journey as well as go through the journey. Yeah. To have someone there taking care of you, mm -hmm. giving you your water, Holding giving you your tissues, mm -hmm holding the space for you, helping you stay on the breath, and then I go around to wherever I'm needed most. Very powerful. Very, very and powerful. Yeah, so it's a four day, the first day. I dance a lot, you know, you know me. Well, yes, very, I, very, I know you, you did. did. Well, and also so you two fire, fire, the, the fire. I eat fire. Yes. You should, she eats fire. I eat fire. <laughs> <laughs> what, you know, but I'm, so this thing of breath and energy and elements through the body has really been a common theme and thread for you. And you're bringing it now into this work in a really yes. powerful way, which I think is beautiful. Yes. And of course, they'll be dancing. Yes. Because I know you're going to have people move. And you mentioned that I was a shamanic priestess, just yes. to give some people clarity on what yes. that is. Mm -hmm. It was actually a year and a half of very deep work mm -hmm. with a specific circle of sisters, the mm -hmm. same circle we met. It was started by a woman named Nicole Christine. Mm -hmm. You can actually look her up and Google her. She passed on a few years ago, and she started the priestess process over 20 mm -hmm. years ago. And it's a very deep journey as sisters as we work together and travel deep into acknowledging our, our shadow and, and conscious communication with one another. And really, the definition of a priestess, some people think this hierarchy, but it's quite the opposite. A priestess is a woman who honors all women's systems. 
who leads from compassion. She's a woman in service who takes her gifts and offers them from service. She honors the path of feminine beauty and sacred sexuality, and she holds a ceremony. Excellent. So, so Excellent. that is the good. That's the great that you that. brought clarity for that. Yeah, because on that third day, there's actually a process that I took from the priestess process. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful because we all have conversations about our sexual experience. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do we have a full story received. So mm -hmm. in this, a woman gets space held as she talks without interruption for about 30 minutes to share her journey of sexuality and spirituality as sisters hold loving space for her in silence. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then staying so in silence, we honor her as we lay her down and anoint her chakras mm -hmm. and really honor the journey that she's been on. That sounds so it's beautiful. So powerful. That really so sounds really beautiful. So yummy. Mm -hmm. So now I want to kind of jump right in then to the fourth spiritual law. Yes, which is perfect because I already sort of gave you a hint in uh -huh. the graphic description. <laughs> and that is the invitation. Yes. yes. Inviting God, source, spirit, whatever that means to you. Mm -hmm into the experience. Mm -hmm. Now that very naturally tends to happen when you're with someone you love. Yes. Because your love takes you into that spiritual realm. Because the spirit being through your love. I know yeah, because my bra strap keeps sticking out. We're both having fun with our left <laughs> shoulder. We have an angel on our left shoulder through the whole. Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, however, when you can create the solar experience mm -hmm. to also be a spiritual and emotional loving experience, mm -hmm. now you really plug in to the connection of spirit with your sexual energy. And I had a huge, powerful message from spirit mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago, and I love that you've got these owl mics because it's very significant. Mm -hmm. I was staying in Palm Springs, and I tend to be a bitter night owl, mm -hmm. and it was about 4.35 in the morning in the gated community, and all the lights were off. I could tell no one was awake. Mm -hmm. So I went out and the jacuzzi was running. And I don't know if you're aware, jacuzzis can be extremely pleasurable for women. Mm. So I had my own ceremony and as I was doing it when I'm having my solo experience that so you want to integrate Mother Earth because you want to have it grounded. You don't want to send all that energy upward because that can be a bit too much energy going up. So as I was having my experience and I'm sending the anchoring it down into the earth and sending the pleasure energy up to spirit and as I'm doing that and the energy is peaking and I'm saying oh, teach this to other women. In that moment, I look and I say, what's a bird of prey doing out at night? I see this huge bird flying toward me in the desert in the summer. And as it gets closer and I'm still releasing the energy and it flies it smack dab in the center where my arms are outstretched and it's a white snowy white owl. Whoa. So I ran to my animal speak book, of course. Yeah. And I looked it up and the snowy white owl represents feminine wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm, beautiful. And it teaches that there is strength and gentleness. Mm. Yes. Mm. And, and I, so much. Yeah. The owls. And I want to throw in this because I know some people have confusion with when they think of God source, they often think of Mother, Father, God. Mm -hmm. And I realize I think that's also why there's a disconnect because no one wants to invite their parents in the room. That's just way too weird. And <laughs> right. It's really uncomfortable. And kind of out of Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember that God source comes in the essence of all relationships. Mm -hmm. The daughter, the sister, mm -hmm. the friend and the lover. Mm -hmm. So if you invite the lover essence of God's source, and if you're single and you're wanting to call, and you're calling in your beloved, mm -hmm. imagine what does that essence feel like to you? Because mm -hmm. if you're a spiritual person, you want them to be embodying that yeah. essence. Mm -hmm. So what does the essence of the lover essence of God's source feel like to you? Mm -hmm. And invite that essence into your experience. When you mm -hmm. touch yourself, imagine it's the hands of your beloved mm -hmm. touching you and calling that energy. And what I've experienced is that when you do that, the physical pleasure is way more powerful, mm -hmm. lasts longer, mm -hmm. and the connection you feel to God's source feels more tangible. Mm -hmm. It's how we're designed. Well, that wouldn't be possible. Right, right. We're designed that way. Beautiful. So this is really a whole journey about really reconnecting to the fullness of God's source energy. However, we're understanding that rather than this compartmentalized, very and sometimes even superficial understanding that, that many may have. So really inviting the whole and the fullness. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I just, Taylor, I'm just, I love your work. I love your work, and I especially love that you're now reaching out to the other generations, the next generations, and for those, you know, women who are still on their paths of healing and wholeness mm -hmm. in this area. I just love how you are shining your light with Thank this uh, and bringing wholeness and healing because it's so needed, it's yes. so necessary. There's so many uh, who are really needing your message the way that only you can bring it. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you truly thank you. for your work. Um, and so I know you have a gift for, for folks to be able to share. I do, I do. There's, um, there's the Playful Awakening audio, which features music by the incredibly beautiful and talented Orgina Rose. <laughs> and it's a 12 minute wake up process because often when we wake up in the morning we're, mm -hmm. we're jumping to do 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 right. and now you're in fight or flight mode. Right. So what this does, it take, gives you, it's only 12 minutes and if you even only listen to the first two songs, mm -hmm. it's only 7 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it will take you to that place that I described, I got mm -hmm. you through that breath and that connection. Beautiful. The other gift is the, um, the sacred sexual archetypes for women. Mm -hmm. And it's based on the air really body types. with the fire goddess, the wind goddess, and the earth goddess. Okay. And there's an assessment that you take. It'll tell you exactly what your primary is, what order you're in. It can be perfectly balanced. You'll figure that out mm -hmm. from the assessment. And then there's an audio that goes with that. Beautiful. And so that's a free gift. And I'm also gifting the ebook copy of the Playful oh, Partnership. Yes. Oh. It's for beloveds in business. It speaks to the man. It's a great read for the woman, even if you're not in a partnership with someone right now, and how to have that conscious communication. Beautiful. And, wow. Uh, and so I want to point on that, too. The connection of sexual energy to our professional expression is that because it's at the root of our creation, as long as there's a part of us holding back to protect this vulnerable aspect of ourselves in any right. way, mm -hmm. we're holding back, period. And mm -hmm. as a breath worker, I'm also a Reiki master, mm -hmm. so I'm very sensitive to energy. I can feel when someone's holding, holding. back to protect something. Mm -hmm. So it really impacts your ability to be fully in your power, like grounded in your voice, voice, and being in your power, unapologetic, powerful truth. Excellent. With Excellent. the message that you're bringing into the world. Very true. Thank you so, so much for being here for your light. Thank you all for being here. We are so, so, so glad that you all could be with us today. And I know, I know that there is something today that can help any one of you out there in any aspect of your journey. Reach out, listen, and keep moving forward on your path. Thank you. Hello everyone and thank you so much for being with us today on our show. I really hope that there was something shared that really helps you shine your biggest and brightest light. Please stop by again, like us on Facebook, tweet us, all of those good things, and most importantly, please always remember, it's all about love. <laughs>